What's going on, fantasy football players here? Back again is Fantasy Football Rat to talk about waivers and trades to buy, buy low, sell high for the week of week two. We're going to dive right into it. I'm not going to waste a lot of fluff. So I, what I'm going to do moving forward is quick videos so you guys can get quick analysis so you guys can make decisions very quickly on your waiver wires. As we know, the, the witching hour of waiver wires is coming up here in a couple hours. So I wanted to make sure everyone has the best advice. Advice number one, Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson is a must-add. Um, whoever had Elijah Mitchell, if he didn't handcuff Jeff Wilson, he's probably in a world of hurt. And for for people with uh, free agent auction bids for waivers, you're going to have to pony up. If you are one of those teams that has running back concerns where there's quite a bit of um, platoons going out there, you saw the Michael Carter, the Brees Hall, the Nick Chubb, the Kareem Hunt, Javante Williams – as well as um, with um, Melvin Gordon. If you really need Jeff Wilson, I want you to overpay. Um, a normal budget of 100, I'm putting in a good look at what your other teams need and look at, think about whatever the other teams have done in the past. And that should help you correlate what number you want to do. It can't, a lot of those websites tell you, you should do 20% of your, of your amount. What do they know? It depends on what the value is within your league. We have a person in our league, Elijah Mitchell. He has no backup. He has Cam Akers, so he is going to overbid for Jeff Wilson. So I, myself, I am going to try to outbid him because I'd like to have the, the, the Jeff Wilson just because Shanahan knows that I use running back. So absolutely. Handcuff-wise, James Conner. Eno Benjamin is now the clear handcuff for James Conner. James Conner misses three or four games a year. I would put in bids for Eno Benjamin. Don't overdo it. But if you have James Conner, without a doubt, you want to overbid for Eno Benjamin. Najee Harris, he escaped possible major injury this past week with his foot that was ailing him from his Liz Frank uh, procedure earlier in the year. Jalen Warren, if you have Najee Harris, is a must-add. I think Jalen Warren is a must-add even if you don't have Najee Harris because if Najee Harris were to go down, the Steelers aren't turning into a, a, a throw him 50 times a game with Mitch Trubisky or with Pickett. They are going to run the ball, and they love Jalen Warren, the rookie. So you want to put an extra couple bucks for Jalen Warren. Um, you saw the clear handcuff for Austin Eckler this past weekend, Joshua Kelly. Uh, if you got Eckler, you better have Joshua Kelly. If you need, you have a bench spot, I would throw him out there as well. Same thing with DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift always gets hurt, and Jamal Williams was the vulture. Inside the red zone, no matter what was happening, Jamal Williams came in. He vultured two touchdowns. I feel like they love that player. They're going to continue doing that. That is not something of fluke. DeAndre Swift is a guy who catches balls. He's going to operate between the 20s. Red zone, it's going to be Jamal Williams. So if you need that, I would absolutely go get him. W uh, wide receiver's perspective, Zay Jones. Now his numbers, he only had 65 yards, but the guy had eight targets. So he caught six for 65 yards. If you have, if you're a PPR if you're also a league that, you know, has larger uh, benches, I would absolutely put Zay Jones for a couple bucks on your roster. DJ Chark, same thing. I think he's had eight to nine targets for the Lions. He got a substantial amount of targets along with Amon St. Brown. So he is heavily, heavily involved in that Lions offense. Corey Davis. You guys know I'm a Jets fan. I have Elijah Moore. But Corey Davis is a veteran. And Salah and his staff love Corey Davis. He is not. They are not going to sit Corey Davis. He is going to get kick targets. Is he the best wide receiver on the Jets? I believe he's not. But he still caught seven targets for, I think, 70-something yards of nine or of nine to ten targets. So that's a guy that's going to get volume with the Jets. And if they're down, they're going to be throwing it to Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. So if you got a bench spot, you know, have a couple bucks to throw away, absolutely spend two, three bucks on Corey Davis. Devin Duvernay came out of nowhere. The new Malcolm Brown role is Duvernay's. The guy is going to be single covered all year. Why? Mark Andrews, double teamed. Then you got Rashad Bateman is going to draw, drag the uh, cornerback one with him. And then you got Lamar Jackson running to putting in safeties. Devin Duvernay is going to get looks, single coverage, and he is a kickoff return specialist with speed. So he caught two touchdowns, and Lamar Jackson seems to have a good rapport. If you have Lamar Jackson and you want lightning in a bottle, absolutely, I would spend extra bucks on Devin DuVernay. Quarterback situation. We all know Dak got hurt. To me, everyone's going to be Carson wins this, Carson wins this, that. The guy is terrible. He's not a good quarterback. 
It's the Redskins offense. Granted, you're not playing the Jags every week. So I would stay away from Carson Wentz. I would go for a Baker Mayfield if you really, really need a quarterback. Baker Mayfield, he's a gunslinger. They have Robbie Anderson. So he is going to look for big shots down the field. Robbie Anderson led the team in targets. So that just tells you Baker likes to throw deep. And then Christian McCaffrey, easy points, a little screen. Christian McCaffrey could take it 80 yards to the house, and Baker gets those points. So without a doubt, Baker is my ad quarterback if you are in a dire straits with Dak Prescott being hurt. From a tight end perspective, everyone is going to be on O.J. Howard's nuts. I am not. He had two touchdowns, yes. Do you know how many targets and catches he had? Two. So fluky inside the red zone, two catches, two touchdowns. That is unsustainable in regards to a full season of fantasy football. The two tight ends I'm adding are Robert Tunyon and Gerald Everett. Robert Tunyon, Rodgers is dealing with a lot of young wide receivers. Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson and Lazard cannot stay healthy. Tunyon seems to be his security blanket. He was targeted, I want to say, nine times. He didn't have the yardage, but still, those will turn into production. So if you're in dire need of a tight end, or even a tight end two to have on your bench, drop a dollar or two for Robert Tunyon. Gerald Everett, you saw the Herbert offense. They chuck the ball, no matter what. With um, Keenan Allen being out possibly three to four weeks with a hammy, there's this Thursday he's out. There's no way he's playing Thursday. It's two days away with a hamstring. Uh, Michael Williams wasn't really included in the office until the fourth quarter. Gerald Everett was getting mad targets. I He is not the best tight end. He drops tons of passes when he was with Seattle. But volume is key. So if, I, if I'm looking for a tight, a tight end for a flyer, Gerald Everett, without a doubt. You guys have any questions? Send it to please leave them in the comments. I would really love if you guys can can give it a like as well. I hope this information helps you guys. And next video I'll send out will a video after post game Thursday. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna send a video out Thursday tomorrow. We can talk about Thursday night football, who I'm starting and who I'm sitting. Hope you guys have a great great day. Good luck tonight in waivers.